Hello and welcome to this WKTV sports presentation. I am Mike Mall, and we are coming to you from the 13th annual Stubby Overmeyer Sports Card Collection Show here at Wyoming Lee High School. It's an annual fundraiser that Ty Amelander puts together to help support the local teams here at Lee. We'll be going around today and talking to some of the local vendors, showing some of the things that they've got, and of course we've got three special guests here with us this year. Jay Reamersma, a former Zealand High School University of Michigan quarterback turned tight end that went on to the NFL career for nine years, will be with us for the first time and also joining us for the first time from the 1984 World Series Championship Detroit Tiger team is Darrell Evans. And for the 13th time as he's always here, Mr. 31 game winner from 1968, Denny McLean. So sit back, enjoy the program and thanks for joining. Search my soul, yeah, I guess like that, so I mean, make me uh, brand new, need one for break me down, build me up, make me more like you, guard my heart, guard the words I speak, lead me far from temptation, give me strength when in my flesh I'm weak. Let your love wash over me. I want to be a light in all the darkest places. A beacon of your love and grace. A shining city set high upon a hill. Give me the courage to boldly speak the truth. Once again, as we are every year, right in front of the autograph table here by Mr. Tom Brooks. Tom, good to see you again, good my friend. Good to see you, Mike. How Pleasure. you been? Good. Very good. Yourself? I am doing well. Thank you. Outstanding. We've got a little different group here today. Jay Reamers, my, bringing in the football aspect of it once again. M. Go Blue. M. Go Blue. You bet, especially this year, the way they're playing yeah. over there. Impressive. And Darrell Evans from 1984. I think he'll be a big draw. Good for the show. Good for the school. Yep. And, of course, Mr. 31 game winner, Denny McLean is back. Yeah, how can you go wrong with that? Exactly so. Well, Tom, you have really expanded your collection that you brought to the show this year. I'm impressed. you got some good stuff out here. Tell us about some of it. Uh, well, it's mostly Tiger stuff. I have vintage cards from 51 up to 78 on my table. Um, I've got some stuff down here. Uh, that's new, and uh, it's a Norm Cash jersey. And then I have an autograph Norm Cash with certificate authenticity, which I thought was really cool, a, a nice piece. Um, 
you know, uh, the Tiger Stadium, the, the 68 Tiger team poster there. Yeah, there's some there's some different stuff. I did some spending. <laughs> there you go. Okay, big question, though. Have you found that mantle card yet? It's an annual question for you, my friend. I have a mantle, but it's not much of a mantle. So I have not found that 52 mantle. So if you have one, bring it by. <laughs> there you go. You heard it here. Tom Brooks is still looking for one of them, and I'm sure he'll pay for it, too. Yeah, I'm going to pay all right. <laughs> Probably have to move out on that purchase. Well, Tom, I've got a room at my house. I think that is probably about half populated with stuff I've gotten from you over the years. So I know it's good stuff when I'm getting it from you, my friend. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I try to bring the good stuff that I like, figuring that others will also like that. And we're coming down to the left side of everything here now, and he's got some very nice-looking plaques that are here in front of us. Yeah, I do. I think my favorite one is this Denny McLean one. Uh, Denny was gracious enough to get out a gold sharpie put all the stats on there and sign this this one in gold as well and then of course the 68 card that is really a treasured treasured piece so uh, somebody's going to be very happy with that on their wall yep it never gets old seeing denny at these things and seeing what he comes back with though does it yeah it doesn't you know he's he's just a cut up in a card and uh, i think that's why we love him you know Good to have him. Yep, absolutely. So we certainly appreciate it. Well, Tom, thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. He's still driving that 1970 hand-me-down truck. And he's still wearing that red and black jersey. Just waiting for the van to start up. He's still showing us what he found and also close to break. Why would you want to change when every memory is still bows to him? But this ain't how we are joined now by Dave Lubbers. Dave, nice to see you, sir. My pleasure. Okay. How's it been going today so far? Hey, very good. Always, always be good to be around baseball fans. Oh, no kidding. Especially yeah. this time of year right. with the World yeah, Series just done. <laughs> long time before spring training starts back Way up. too long. Absolutely. We just wanted to touch base with you here a little bit. You've got some pretty nice pictures back here behind us. I'll step out of the way, and I'll give you the mic, and you can tell us about them. Okay, that's fine, yeah. This picture is a very unique photo. My son and I were at the last game at Tiger Stadium. And that's what this is a photo of. Uh, my son took this picture. It was ironic. We're not professional photographers. And he was taking a picture. Um, and he was going to get more of the infield and cut it off right here when the guy ahead of us stood up. He's flipped the camera and he wound up with this photo instead. And we got Tiger Stadium, the letters on there. But this is the last pitch ever thrown at Tiger Stadium. If you look carefully, there's the ball. And it's also verified by the, uh, by the uh, inning. Number 36, Carlos Beltran, who was Rookie of the Year that year, um, is, is the batter he's about to swing and miss. And uh, Todd Jones, the pitcher, signed it. Beltran uh, is the batter, and the catcher is a guy you probably heard of named Brad Osmus. <laughs> and, uh, but it's a unique photo. Um, this photo is in the uh, Hall of Fame library in Cooperstown. So my son took it, I took it, but my, his turned out much better. So, so I got to give him credit on that. But uh, this one down here, it's a unique photo. It's the same photo at, at the top. Uh, again, the final pitch at, um, at uh, Tiger Stadium. I took this one down here. It's the first pitch at Comerica Park. And if you look closely, you can also see the ball down here. So what's unique about these pitchers is... They're consecutive. People don't think about that, but last pitch at Tiger Stadium, first pitch at Comerica Park. So they're in different ballparks, and they were thrown in different centuries, 1999 and the year 2000. So um, it's a very, uh, very unique photo. Jones signed that one again. I don't. This one I have at home signed by, by Brian Muller, who uh, who threw the uh, first pitch at Comerica Park. Yeah. In fact, I have it, uh, this one at home signed, I got him signed by Osmus also, and this one signed by uh, Carlos Beltran, who swung and missed, by the way, <laughs> for the final out, yeah. 
And what about the ones you've got in your hands, uh, sir? Are, these are some photos that I'm, I am selling today. Uh, I, I love this one. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I haven't, I, haven't actually, I haven't decided if I want to park this one with this one yet. Everybody's favorite, Ernie Harwell. Um, and I love that one. And here's a unique photo. Um, Justin Verlander, even though he left us, uh, uh, he's uh, still much beloved by Tiger fans. What's unique about this one is what people don't realize is that he wore number 59, his debut year, which is 2005. 2006, he switched over to 35, and that's the number he wears right now. But uh, number 35, Justin Verlander. If you look at, at his face, uh, this is long before he met Kate Upton, so <laughs> he looks extremely young here. <laughs> Definitely does. Well, those are some treasure keepers right there, to say the least. Both in the Hall of Fame, so that is wonderful. Well, we appreciate the time. We wish you all the best. Thank today. you. I enjoyed it myself. Thank you. All right, we are joined by the second and the third generation of the families that are behind all of this. Give me some names here, if you would, please. Erica. What's your name? Madeline. Amanda. What's your name? Bye. All right. And you are the daughters of the families that have had this thing going for all of the 13 years. And how old are these two? How old are you? Four. And? D. Oh, getting up there, huh? Are you having fun today? Yes. Yeah? What you gonna do? She said she's big. Oh. <laughs> yeah? So, what's this all about? Do you know what's going on today? Well, we're setting up for the car show. There you go. And then do you have to tear down at the end of it, too? Yeah. Yeah? Is that a lot of work? Yep. Not a boat in on them dots. <laughs> oh no, what she said. <laughs> We're going to need subtitles. <laughs> so That's all right. We can understand. You've been here for all of these, I know, Amanda, right? I, I missed the first one. I did. I missed yeah. one one. What, is, what do you think of all of this? I know every year we get to talk about this a little bit and the impact that it has and everything else, but how special is this time, really? It's... You want to you you take it? Two? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> um, it is really special because you get to spend time with a lot of people who mean a lot to you, and you get to work for a better cause than just, you know... And don't know the right words to say, but something that's personal and close to you yeah. Know, softball is something we've loved for yeah, and it's it's nice time. because it's something too. Like we're not really associated with the school right now, yep. at least, and so it's like we still get to come back to the school that we went to and still give our time and support and stuff, mm -hmm. and it's it's just really cool. And that's a lot of it right there from the point of view. So often you see students once they graduate they basically just write off where they came from. They don't want to be associated with it anymore. So I give you guys all the kudos in the world for doing that. That is fantastic. And, and it's neat to see the appreciation of the school, of the community, and what you can bring forth to it. That's the ball game, absolutely. softball, baseball. That's something that's yep. absolutely. since we were little but important to us. So yep. Yep. we get to celebrate that on, there you go. on a weekend like this. There so. you go. Well, you want to sign off? You want to say goodbye to everybody? No. No. <laughs> no. How about you? Want to say goodbye? Yeah. No. you either? All right. What do you want to say? Do you want to say what you were for Halloween? I'm um, Yadda. Uh, last to girl. What were you? I was Tinkle Bell. Oh, I bet you were good ones. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Well, we appreciate the time as always. We never know what we're going to get with the two of you, but we do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye. Well, bye. Wave to them. Bye. There you go. Thank you. Wait, Just wait, a minute. Wait. We got to get you unhooked. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sunday's here and the bacon's on. The eggs are frying and the coffee's strong. We are joined now by Ken Vanderslick. Ken, nice to see you again this year, sir. Glad to be here. I, I know we had a conversation last year. How's things going so far? Oh, well, it's, it's just better than ever. You know, Jay Remus was here this year, and he's such a personable person, you know. Yep. You, you get these heroes sometimes, and they're, they play for Michigan and the pros and stuff, you know. And, but he's just such a down-to-earth guy. He says hi to you. Looks at, he looks at you when he talks to you, you know. But it's kind of nice for me to be back this year because I had back surgery in the last year, and uh, it was doing really well. The only difficulty with it seems to be they won't let me go bowling yet. So, uh, But, you know, how much... This is one of the best shows in the area. Absolutely. And, of course, you know, like I said last year, we all support Lee High School, you know. Yep. The effort that people put in it. When I see Coach DiGennaro here and guys that have been out of school for 10 years come in and give them a hug, it says something. You know, and, uh, you know, we can talk about money, fame, all these kind of things. Yep. But we all know that friendship, a smile, these kind of things make a big difference. Absolutely so. So, uh, you know, it's... And he's just, a, he's just a super nice guy, you know. Probably we're not one, talking about Probably him, one though. of the best. Well, we're talking about, you know, his, 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 his can I say that on TV? His wife is better beautiful. looking than he is. Oh, a lot better looking. I don't know how I got her. <laughs> that was Tom DeGennaro. I'm sure most people know it already, yeah. but uh, just a quick flash there. We'll get to him in a minute or two. But, you know, you, you look around at people. You see any frowns, no grumpies. Yep. Everybody is smiling. Everybody's happy, having a good time. You know, I probably spend 60% of what I, what I make, so my wife knows when I come home, you know, it's no big deal. Yep. Not going to be the big money-making Saturday by any means, but you get so much more out of it, don't you? Well, there's a lot more to that. You know, that's what people have to realize, you know. This is a hobby, and there's money. Sure, you have to make some money because otherwise you can't buy stuff and right. everything. And I try to make my hobby self-sufficient. You know, I buy what I can afford based on what I sell. Yep. So that's kind of nice, but... Uh, you know, I'm 72 now. It's just a hobby, and these are the people around. Just, you know, I talked to everybody out here today. I, of course, I usually do, but I mean, you know. <laughs> but you know, people where it's at, you don't know the smile you give somebody. Maybe the only smile they get all day. Absolutely so. And if you can get some kid a deal, I gave a Mike Trout card away a while ago. Hey, you see the smile on the kid's face? Oh, uh huh. I did. We were standing right here. Isn't that awesome? That was absolutely so. You know that card don't mean a lot. You got a nice picture there. The Jay already signed, looks like. Yep. Yep. Good deal. He, he wrote "Go Bills" down here, but I made him put "Go Blue" on it too. <laughs> yeah. What else do you have out here in oh. front of us? That you're Maglio. There you go. See One he, of the bobbleheads. Yeah, he he shakes his head longer than normal, but uh, <laughs> you know it's I got all the hair. Yeah, I got a Shirley Maldini autograph. Uh, it's her, her movie that, of her life. She autographed that. And I got a gun smoke and I got a book on uh, Red Sox. Ah. And I got a movie, the Sh Super Bowl Shuffle. Okay. <laughs> now, how many? Everybody remembers them. Absolutely. But you know, this, this is what memories are made of. Yep. You know, when I was younger, they used to have one show a year and it was at Aquinas College. Oh, yeah. And everybody in the world came there. Yep. And uh, it was just awesome. Now you don't have that many shows anymore, all, all in all, by comparison, like what there used to be, is there? No, no. This is the best one, though. I yep. wouldn't miss this one for nothing. I was happy a couple weeks ago when the doctor said, yeah, you can go to the show, but you can't lift over 20 pounds. So I get Coach DiGennaro. He, there you he go. He called it all in for me. You got the good helper there. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got, you know, a lot of, lot of muscle and brawn. <laughs> He's ignoring us pretty well over there right yeah. now. But, you know, when you see somebody 10 years down the road come back and see him, yep. that's what life is about. There's some kids in this school system who have a tough time. Absolutely so. But how many people make it because of people like him? Right. And there's others like him around here. That one influence in your life can make all the difference. And somebody cares. Yep. Yep, absolutely. I remember the day that the, some guy told a girl she was... Well, she, not nice words necessarily, but she was heavy. And he made him apologize to it. And the kid learned something. Yep. Hasn't done it since. There you go. Absolutely. But, you know, so, it's, you know, I just, I kind of like people anyhow, you know. I work at All-Star Sports part-time. I used to work at Sports Card Stadium. But just some of these crazy people follow me wherever I go, you know. 
Well, we appreciate the time today, sir. It's always oh. good to see you. Always good to be here. All right. Thank you, you guys much. are special. Thank you. Tom, how you been, sir? Good to I'm see you. I'm doing great. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. So, Absolutely yes. Absolutely yep. so. Absolutely so. Football season's wrapped up. Yeah, it's wrapped up, and um, we had a lot of fun this year. Unfortunately, we didn't win very many games, but uh, the group of kids that we have showed up every day, worked their tails off, did a lot of growing up, and... Um, believed in the system and we had fun we had a lot of fun and you're not in the easy conference oh and no okay, silver is unbelievable no. you're in and you're out as a matter of fact we're uh, leaving the conference Are you really? for a couple of years to help build the program oh, so good. we just can't compete with programs that have uh, for example on thursday night we went out and played hopkins in a jv game and i looked behind the field and i saw about 80 kids little kids practicing football and um all in Hopkins jerseys, yep. and, and we can't compete with that right Absolutely. now. So maybe in the future, but go. not right now. Good things to look forward to. Yes, no doubt. All right, how's the baby day been going so far here today? Um, good. Keeping him in line over here to your left. Well, Ken's always a treat to hang out with, and I got one of my best buddies, one of my lifetime buddies on my right side, John Treesenberg over here, that we grew up together, slinging cards at back and forth with each other. So yes, this helps us, helps our relationship stay together too. So. And he's a pretty special guy, so. Some camaraderie. Yeah. That, uh, these, this little hobby brings in. Yes, people, exactly, yep. And as you look around today and see the number of people that are here and year in and year out for this thing, it's yep. amazing. Yeah, and Ty does a great job putting this together. It's yep. it's probably the best show in West Michigan anyways for the year. Yep. Well, Tom, we appreciate the time. We wish you all the best. All right, thanks. Good we'll we'll keep fighting. Always. Go Rebels. There you go. We are joined here by Jay Reimersma. Jay, welcome to Wyoming Lee. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure to have uh, ex-athletes from uh, local areas, especially having grown up in Zealand. Where do you live now, Jay? You know what? I moved about two miles uh, south of where I grew up. So I'm still, uh, we have a Holland address, but we still live in Zealand Public Schools, the district. So okay. we uh, live in the, the side that's still the Chicks. So our kids are, are attending Zealand East High School, yep. uh, which was formerly just kind of Zealand. Sure. You know, and back, back when you grew up. Back when I grew up, and there was uh, just kind of a small town. Now it's uh, grown uh, quite a bit, and we have two high schools there now. So yep. we're still chicks. There you go. Went to University of Michigan, mm -hmm. recruited as a quarterback, Yep. wound up with a rotator cuff injury, if I remember right, and uh, Coach Muller said you're going to be a tight end. Yes. Is that kind of how it all came about? Actually, it did. Um, you know, I went there, like you said, as a quarterback, had a rotator cuff injury. Coach Moeller called me in uh, about a month before spring ball started. We were doing workouts, and I was rehabbing my shoulder. It was a partial tear, so it wasn't didn't require surgery. It was one of those deals where you just wanted to rehab it and see if it responded and we could get back out there and start playing. And I was three years in to my quarterbacking days, and Coach Moeller says to me, he's like, you know, we have a need at tight end, and you're too good of an athlete to be sitting on the sidelines. We need to get you out there, and so here's the deal. I know you don't want to move, but we'll try it for spring ball, and that move was divine intervention. It parlayed into a nine-year NFL career, and I've been blessed ever since. Absolutely. Had you ever played anything besides quarterback leading into that point? I would, no, and, and Stan Jeske is a coach here at Wyoming Lee. He was my athletic director and head football coach. I was one of those guys that always had a red jersey on. Sure. And can't nobody touch. can't touch the quarterback, right? I, I can remember as a freshman, I wanted to go out there and hit some people, so I lined up as a safety uh, in my freshman year, and the, and the coaches quickly pulled me aside and said, nope, you're not even playing defense. When I got to Michigan and they moved me to tight end, they had to teach me how to get in a three-point stance. Oh, I, I had never been in a three-point wow. stance. So it was uh, a truly incredible experience 
it was a great blessing, and like I said, it was the right move. Absolutely. Went on to, if I remember right, a nine-year NFL career. Is that correct? Yep. I played uh, nine years in the NFL, seven with Buffalo, and then two with Pittsburgh, the Steelers. And, um, you know, again, it's a funny story. I can remember uh, Kara, who's my current wife. We've been married for uh, 21 years now. Um, at the time we were dating, and I asked her, looking at her, like, hey, wh- what would be the best place to go to if, if you wanted to pick? You know, she's like, oh, you know, I'd love to go someplace warm. And I said, well, what would be the worst, you know? And without hesitation, she said, Buffalo. <laughs> And I'm like, why Buffalo? And she's like, well, have you ever seen the Weather Channel? They're always on location with some blizzard, you know. And about 10 minutes later, then head coach Marv Levy calls and says, hey, we're going to pick you with the, you know, 244th pick in the seventh round. And there my name scrolled across. So, Honey, I've got some news for you. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of funny. But you know what? It, there again, uh, just the Lord kind of had a plan sure. for us. And uh, I, I was able to be a part of a great veteran team there that kind of taught me the ropes in the yep. NFL very early yep. and it uh, it was a great experience and I'm very blessed. There you go. Few surgeries over the course of time in the NFL that's a rough spot to be playing isn't it? It is. Um, fortunately for me other than my last surgery most of those surgeries I, I was uh, in nine years and had eight surgeries but most of it was just kind of cleaning things up and getting things lubed up, ready to go for the next year. But uh, the final one was the one that kind of um, ended my career, and that was a torn Achilles in Pittsburgh. It happened in December. Uh, interesting story. It happened on a touchdown pass on a Sunday evening uh, game against Jacksonville. Okay. Caught a touchdown, came down, blew out my Achilles. So my career is bookend. My first NFL career catch is a touchdown in Buffalo, and my last career catch is a 27 yard touchdown with the Steelers so it's kind of funny but that ended it for me yep absolutely and what are you doing these days Jay well I work for a nonprofit called Family Research Council that is uh, an organization based in Washington DC that tries to promote uh, a Christian worldview through the public uh, in the public square so uh, we dabble in politics a little bit try to get the right people elected in Congress and uh, at the federal level so that uh, our Judeo-Christian heritage is one that is uh, is um, advanced throughout our culture. So that's kind of what I do. Well, good for you. That's a great project from that point. Ever make it over to the big house yet for games or not too much? You bet. I, we've been to probably two or three games a year for a lot of years. This year's a little bit different. I have a daughter that is a freshman playing at uh, Miami of Ohio, the Red Hawks, on the volleyball team down there. So a lot of our weekends now that used to be geared towards <laughs> Michigan football, we're going to watch her play somewhere. And as a matter of fact, that's where I'm heading now. I'm heading to watch her. Uh, they play Western this okay. afternoon. So that's where I'll be heading. All right. Well, Jay, again, it's a pleasure. We greatly appreciate the time, and we appreciate the time taken out here to talk with us. Awesome. This is a great opportunity, great group of people, and I'm glad to be here supporting it. Thank you very much. God bless, sir. God bless you. Have a great day. Take care. You too. We're joined by the organizer of this whole event, Ty Amelander. Ty, it's good to see you again today. Nice to see you guys, and last night I really appreciate you coming out oh. and doing the debate. It was awesome. That uh, I, I, We talked about it beforehand, saying try to keep it to an hour. I think we made it through <laughs> the, not even the pregame part of it before that. Yeah, and it wasn't because we were eating slow. It was a lot of talking. <laughs> Number 13. It. Uh, I, I know I ask you this every year as you look back through everything and just – just try to comprehend and put it all together. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I um, kind of, we've been kind of doing stat thinking a little bit because of that debate, and I, I kind of threw it together, and we got a, well over 500 wins, major league wins have walked through that door. Wow. To come to, and I mean, if you think about Denny coming 13 times, yep. and then we've had over 1,000 major league home runs walk in through our doors. 
um, what is it, two MVPs, three um, Cy Youngs, hmm. about 20 all-star appearances have showed up here at Lee High School, all the players that showed up. So wow, that's it's, great. It's, it's bigger than anything I ever thought would happen yep, when we first started this. So. And especially for such a small district, one of the smallest, if not the smallest in the entire state, and to bring people in for something like this, that's amazing. Yeah, it's um, it's been a really um, it's 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 kind of it's it's a lot of work, but it's also kind of cool. You get to meet people. I've got to know you know meet Daryl Evans. I was I was actually at Tram and Morris's um, private party in Cooperstown this okay. year with Daryl, and it was like uh, it was like a dream to me. I was almost like I can't believe this is happening. I mean, there's only about fifty people there. I mean, wow. I'm I'm there standing next to Chris Illich, hmm. you know, <laughs> and um, it, it was quite a quite a um, affair absolutely who are some of them I know we talk about some of the other ones we had Mickey Stanley a couple times we had Dean Chance a few years ago who are some of the other ones you've had Bob in? Feller was here That's one year right. Bob Feller was a, that was an amazing guy 90 years old jumped on a plane and flew all the way here by himself hmm. we had Jose Canseco yep. um, John Vanderwall um, Rick Kruger, who went here he's one of the three wins of those okay um, 500 some <laughs> wins that walked through the door so I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. I know oh, we had yes. Ray Bentley here a few yep. times and yep. uh, uh, Cam Bradfield. So there have been quite a handful of people. Tommy Magic last year. Yep, I got Tommy to meet Magic. him. He was a joy to talk with. This year we had Jay Reamers come in. Yeah, um, that was awesome. Of Jay come in. He's helping our football program a little bit, try to raise some funds. So. Okay, good deal. And we talked to Coach DeGenero earlier on the football program, so got the update on them as well. What does the event go for, Ty? Where do you primarily focus anything that you get back from this? Well, it really kind of has a lot of different legs now. Um, we use a good amount of the funds to put into our baseball field. That's what we named it, Stubby Overmeyer um, yep. Field. Yep. You know, and that's, that's the really the name that um, we wanted to keep alive in West Michigan and also that name brought Denny to us, brought people, um, former Tigers to us and they donated stuff and it got it kind of rolling. So a, a good chunk of the money goes to the field, some of the money goes to our kids spring trip. Yep. Once in a while we might even buy a piece of equipment we need. We bought a, a fly ball machine a couple years ago that was badly needed. Okay. But then too, um, this year we're going to give some of the money to the softball program because the Grundike family has been, they, they the setup and tear down and all this and running this, they could almost do it. I, I almost don't have to be here really. They're, they're, they know that much about it. And um, then we're, we're, this year, the soccer team selling tacos out there. The athletic yep. boosters is, um, and they're getting money towards it in the football program with Absolutely. Jay Reamer's muscle. It's kind of, I don't mind spreading it around. I wish more programs would get involved and um, we would help them out too. Right. Absolutely. Well, Ty, we know you're busy as always <coughs> on these things, so we appreciate the time, and we uh, thank you for the invite to come back out. It's always a pleasure. I know it's Gary's and my one of our highlights <coughs> every year that we get to come out and do this with you. Well, I thank you guys. I want to make sure I don't forget, like, um, Larry Orlowski, John Hess, and their buddy over there. They, they've helped out big time getting um, uh, going and picking up Daryl and setting up at Brands, and Larry did a lot of legwork for setting up the whole event at Brands, and the brand's family. I mean, they've been here every step of the way for 13 years. Yep. It was so good to see Johnny and Tommy last night. And um, if you're a West Michigan person, you get this before <laughs> November 6th. Hey, Tommy Brand, we, we need him to move up into the political ranks because he's a good, common, um, normal person that we need in Washington someday. Yep, absolutely. Well, Ty, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it as always. Thank you. And um, I'm going to go help Daryl out. There, there you go. Thank you. I want to take the time here to, uh, first of all, uh, thank Denny McLean once again for doing this for the 13th time. Uh, former Cy Young Award winner, two times, MVP, and really the straw that stirs the drink here at um, Godfrey Lee Public Schools. We got a new guest this year who's come all the way from Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, Bill James says is the most underrated baseball player ever. 414 home runs, first guy to hit 40 home runs in both leagues, um, Mr. Darrell Evans. I love you, Michigan. 
And last night we had a little discussion about what team was better, 68 or 84. Give me the mic. I, 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 I will hand the mic to Mike. Daryl first, and then, then you want, he gets you want another 13 years. Then he gets the mic. If you want another 13 years, you will not give him that mic. You get the mic next. <laughs> he doesn't want me to have the mic. And we all agreed last night that uh, both teams were really good and that and I didn't insist, even though we had a big, long debate, and because I didn't want Denny to cry because we said that the 84 team was much better. But then we <laughs> backed off so he wouldn't cry and come back later. But he did that this morning. Again, came in and said, well, we had a new vote and they won. So, we had, isn't it great though? We had those two great teams. It's been a long time, it? Yeah. It's been way too long. And uh, if they were to put us in charge, we'd have had a couple of world champions since then. So, um, just uh, I love I love Michigan. Love being back here in the Grand Rapids area and uh, say hi to everybody. So uh, I'm still around, people. And yeah. you know, I, I you you are the best sports fans in the world. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here, but I really believe that. I grew up in Pasadena, California, right next to the Rose Bowl. So I knew how great of fans you were when you were losing to the Pac-10 out there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, Danny, do you want to rebuttal that at all? I just voted 68. You just voted 68? You had a tiebreaker. Thank you very much. Um, for the signing here, um, since um, Daryl just come in, I know we're a little, I was a little bit out, but we will try to do it on ticket. joined now by the chef of the day out here working on his tacos. Who do we have? Uh, Jaime Ramirez. I'm the soccer coach for Godfrey Lee Public Schools and uh, I'm helping the robotics teams today to raise money for the projects that they have. Wonderful. What all do you have here? It certainly smells good out here right now. Yeah, we got authentic Mexican tacos made out of beef and or steak. Uh, we chop them and everything, so it'll be ready to go. And when they come, they're going to have everything hot. We got the ingredients right here, limes, onions, uh, cilantro, and salsas. We got like five different types of salsas right here today. Wonderful. And you said the proceeds are going for what? For the robotic team. And what all do they are, are involved with? Uh, they go on competition. They come. They compete last year, and they were in second place, which on a, makes me think that they need help, and I'm here to help today. Good deal. Well, we appreciate the time, and I think maybe we're going to pay you a visit before too much longer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. What year did Abner Doubleday invent the games? For one million dollars. 1865. For one million dollars. What year did Abner Doubleday invent the game of baseball? 1839. Well, joined for the 13th consecutive year here, baseball's last 31 game winner, MVP, Cy Young. I could go on and on, but everybody knows who the gentleman to my right is, Denny McLean. How Denny, are you? welcome good, back. Good to see you. Good to see you. Always good to have you back in Wyoming, Lee. It's always nice to be here. 
Had a good time last night with the debate. We won't go into which team won, which team lost. We said they were even. Well, we won. Um, <laughs> the, um, no, the debate last night was terrific. It, it's too bad we didn't have more people there. We had, we had a full room. Yep. But uh, we could have. It was just a great show. Yep. Daryl was super. He, he really had a good time last night, and I think the whole room had a good time. Yes. A lot of great stories told. Oh, a lot goodness. of excitement came out of the room, and so... Uh, I mean, that was only supposed to last 45 minutes, and we didn't get out of it until 1130. Yeah. So it was quite a long night. I talked to Ty beforehand. I said, how long do you want me to keep this to? And he said, oh, an hour. That's it. Yeah. I yeah. said, we didn't even get through the questions in an hour, let no. alone the conversation. It was incredible. So how have you been doing? Fair to Midland, just north of Saginaw. That is um, <laughs> the, um, you know, listen, everything's one day at a time now. There you go. I mean, I've turned 74 now, and... Um, you know, I work just as hard, it just takes a little longer to finish them. Yep. It's um, this old age thing is uh, old may be, excuse me, old old may not be the right uh, adjective, but it's, uh, you know, it just gets tougher, a little tougher every day, especially sure. with the amount of traveling we do. Yep. And um, I'm, I'm convinced now, it never used to touch me, the traveling, but boy, it takes me uh, two or three days now to recover from a long trip. It's, okay. uh, it's really starting to take its toll. And you're making a lot of trips with the uh, business side of it and doing yep. these type of things, yeah. aren't you? Last year we did about 180 shows. Wow. Um, we'll probably do at least that many this year. Yep. Um, and, um, you know, as the whole world knows, politically speaking for a second, that, you know, medical insurance is a bear. And, uh, and we're, in, we're in no different boat than everybody else is. And we've got great insurance. Yep. I wish everybody had our insurance. but. There are certain things that, due to my wife's illness, her disease, is that they're doing some things out of the box right now, trying to find the answer to, to most of this Parkinson's uh, yep. garbage. And um, what happens is you, you, you're allowed to make a couple of decisions. Do you want to go ahead and have this surgery or this done or that done? And then you find out you, you, the insurance companies don't cover it. Ugh. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's the reason I work every day. Sure. I mean, it's, uh, you can't say no, not to a woman you've been living with for 55 years. <laughs> How is she doing overall, Denny? She's fighting, you know, she's battling her butt off. Good. It's, uh, she's, uh, she's been tough all of her life. Yep. Uh, well, you know, like I said last night, being married to you, she has to be. She has to be. A lot of trauma in our marriage because of me. And, uh, but, uh, you know, she's, uh, she's standing right there with me, Good. sitting there anyway. And, Good. Um, the worst thing we're battling right now is her balance. Her balance has just gotten to be a joke. It's just uh, she can't walk anymore unless she has some kind of wheels to help her go from one side of the room to the other. Sure. So it's, um, you know, when you see somebody as healthy as she was up until six, seven years ago, it's hard to believe you can go that far south. Right. And, and I sympathize with everybody out there who's going through this Parkinson's thing. I don't, I, I don't know if there's ever going to be a cure while any of us are living. We all have hope, but uh, you begin to wonder how much money is the number that it takes to cure something. Is it another dollar? Is it another billion? Is it five billion? Yep. Uh, and, um, you know, sooner or later, you know, they'll come up with something. I'm not quite sure what it'll be, but the Lord knows the society in general, they deserve a cure. Yep. Well, as I say every year, and I said to you last night, you are both in thoughts and prayers big well, time. Well, thank you. Thank you very yep, much. It means a lot. Good. Well, you made it out to the Hall of Fame again this year. Had yeah. a couple of Tigers be inducted. That had to be a kind of special treat. Yep. It was a good time uh, with uh, Tram and uh, uh, Gibson. Um, it was uh, Gibson, no, Morris. Morris. Um, and uh, it was... Um, you know, it was the way it was supposed to be. Nice and a great ceremony. Uh, th those two guys don't pop off much, so they, uh, although Jack has been known to from time to time, but Alan, you know, if you, if you put two stacks of dynamite in his mouth, he wouldn't say a word. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, they both handled themselves very, very well. Yep. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens over the next couple of years, because there's, you know, it's like I said, there's a lot of guys um, that deserve to be in the Hall of Fame and if we would just look at this time-wise, Jack and Alan probably should be going in one day, but much later, yep. because you've got uh, Jimmy Cott with the, with the uh, Minnesota Twins, 
who's got 280 wins sure. and, and can't get in. Yep. And then you got Tony Oliva, 304 lifetime career hitter, who was the best hitter I ever saw in my life. Yep. Uh, he was on a dozen all-star teams and he can't get in the Hall of Fame. Uh, so you begin to wonder uh, what's going on with the Hall of Fame. I, and my, my, it's not even a guess anymore. They're, they're politicizing now the Hall of Fame. Yeah. It used to be different when Bob Feller was a part of the Hall of Fame. Of course, Bob passed. But uh, Bob kind of kept his eye on everything to make sure nothing was being silly yep. uh, with people getting in. And uh, we need Bob right now. We need somebody like Bob because uh, the politicizing of the Hall of Fame just isn't right. Yep, absolutely. And the 50-year uh, anniversary this last fall, that had to be pretty special to go back into uh, now Cole America as compared to Tiger Stadium. But that had to be fun. Yeah, it, uh, it was, um, you know, the the... the it, it's great to be honored. It's great to be a, as a part of that organization for, for that particular weekend. But you know what? It, it takes three, four days to recover. Yeah. I'm telling you, by the time you get done, you're there Thursday, Thursday night. You're there all day Friday, Saturday. And I'm not complaining. Don't misunderstand me. But boy, I'll tell you, come Monday morning, woo! <laughs> you could have put me in a hospital for a month. Uh, that's how tired I was. It yep. was. Uh, and you're going all the time. You're doing interviews. You're, you're meeting with people. You're meeting. Uh, I met more family members of other players than I met with my own. Hmm. Uh, it's amazing uh, the number of people that uh, showed up, family and friends I'm talking about, yep. uh, that uh, wanted to come and say hello, get an autograph and what have you. And all of that's fine. We've never said no to an autograph. And uh, the bottom line was it, uh, it just it wears the hell out of it. And again, I'm not complaining. Just telling you some of the circumstances that that were, were going on, and yep. and every time I turned around, one or two guys had already gone home, and I'm thinking, hmm, he went home. Let me think. Could I go home and get away with it? And that's because I could just see it then. Denny McLean leaves the ball club. I can just see the headline now. So we didn't dare take that chance. Yep, absolutely. So the uh, Tigers this last year, they sucked. They sucked. What do you think the Pretty future's much. looking? Oh, I don't know. They, you know, if you could look at and write them all down on paper, what do you got? You got 40 guys on paper. Yep. I mean, that's all you got. You, you just don't have any idea. Um, Tigers so got to get back to basics. Namely, they have to start raising their crews in the minor leagues, in their own organization. Uh, they can't rely upon other clubs to produce winners for them. In other words, if if uh, let's say Boston, Chicago, who it might be, and they want to do a deal, do the Tigers really think that these guys who've been in Keokuk, let's say last year, are going to be major leaguers this year? Do you, you really think that the White Sox or the Cubs are going to raise people to go from the minor leagues to the major leagues the next year? I hardly doubt it. Right. You know, uh, but we need to get back to basics. We need to get back to catching the ball. Yep. We need to get back to playing uh, cutoff baseball scoring a run uh, and, and doing the necessary things that you can produce on, on the field with a winner. And uh, we're, we're not very close to doing that yet. I mean, I hear the, uh, s the social media type of thing about, oh yeah, we're gonna be better. We're gonna, well, does that mean you're gonna win one more game or two? <laughs> but uh, I'm just, uh, I don't see much future with them right now. Yep. Um, and, and they really, with, with very few exceptions, they had very few people who would spark a comeback quickly. So you're just gonna have to wait and see. I know they picked up two guys the other day. Um, I, I don't know if it was waivers or whatever, but uh, if those guys were such stars, you wouldn't be trading them. Sure. So it's- They wouldn't be available yeah, out there right. if that was the case. You know, what goes up normally comes down pretty quick. <laughs> and uh, I believe we got some hard lessons coming still for the next couple, two, three years. Yep. Now looking back, Gary and I, our, our cameraman and producer here, we we took a look at some of the photos that we saw of you out there, and there's a couple of them where your toes are actually above your head and your leg kick. Something wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with that. How could you do that consistently, though? How were you able to do? Well, that? my dad taught me how to pitch. Okay. And, uh, I, I did everything my dad wanted me to do. My dad died when I was 13. And um, so I, I got lucky. I had him for 13 years and he taught me how to play baseball. Okay. Literally taught me how. So I don't know, would one year less or two years less made a difference, I suspect. But uh, he was uh, a hell of a player. He, just himself, he was 
a monster player. He was offered a contract by the Cubs at one time. Uh, but uh, my mother, uh, who wasn't the biggest baseball fan in the world, apparently, <laughs> because she told him, you can either have baseball or you can have me. What is it? <laughs> and, uh, you know, when you're 19 years old, I don't think you're going to take baseball. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't think my dad was any different than the rest of us were yep. and are. And uh, so he married my mom. And, and fortunately for me, he married my mother. Yep. You know, if, had he not done that, we probably wouldn't be doing an interview. You know? <laughs> well, I'm glad he did then. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, where else would I want to be except in Grand Rapids, Michigan? Today? Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. I agree with you. I have a great time up here. Especially oh, with Ty. Ty yeah, oh, that's what I was just going to say. Ty, I know Ty loves is, it when you come back around. He's a beauty boy. He's, uh, I at times don't think he's playing with a full deck, and then other times I think he's playing with too many decks. Uh, he's got great kids. I mean, the, the kids are just as marvelous people. And um, But, uh, you know, Ty's a little goofy. So uh, <laughs> we will just string him along and see how long we can string him along for. So, but there you go. He does one hell of a job with, with this program we have every year, 13 years, as you said. And um, next year he'll say it was 19 years because he doesn't remember either. <laughs> but uh, we have a good time. We have a real good time. And the last month before this thing comes about all the time, panic time sets in with him. And uh, that's the funniest part of it because, you know, most of the people who are here this year and last year and the year before are all the same people. Sure. And uh, everybody's been gracious for the last 13 years. And I, I think we've done some pretty extraordinary things here at the school and, and with the school and with the kids. And uh, because you gotta, you gotta wonder, this is our 13th year. That means at least 13 classes have turned over. Yeah. That's a lot of kids. All the way from kindergarten through 12th grade. Absolutely. Made it We've had a good time. And, uh, you know, the sports teams and what have you, uh, we're all very proud. Yep. And you have certainly uh, done more than your share. You have brought in some uh, mighty big names with you in the past here. Well, there's no other way to get some people out here. Um, the, um, the one we brought in this year, Daryl yep. uh, Evans, of course. I keep calling him Dale Evans, Roy Rogers' wife. <laughs> and um, he, uh, he came in and, and played the part of Daryl. Daryl, please, Daryl. Daryl, just the way he's supposed to play it. Uh, he's tremendous with the people. Yes. Uh, he'll, and don't fall into his trap because he loves to talk. <laughs> we found you, that out last you, night. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you, if you uh, imagine a guy... Let's say, I, I'm trying to figure out some way to imagine and, and give you a picture of, of how much he likes to talk. And I think I just figured it out. Let's figure, he's been in jail for five years, had no jail cell, he had no partner in the cell, and this is the first day after five years he's got a chance to talk. That's the way he sounds every day of the week. When I see him coming, I will go, I quickly duck behind doors and windows and stuff. He's... Uh, <laughs> He goes on and on and on and on and on. And half the time you can't follow a damn thing he says. So, uh, but he likes to hear himself talk. You know. Now, did you ever face him? I know there was not in the league play back then. but A little was, bit. So it would have been in the uh, spring little, training? Yeah, a little bit of spring training. Okay. And then, uh, um, I don't think anywhere else. I don't think so. Okay. Who got the best of the deal? Well, it's not him. <laughs> of course not Come him. On. Come on. That was a silly question, you know, wasn't it? You know better than that. <laughs> I asked you this once before, I think in the because, first. Because believe me, if he had got me. We would have heard about it already. We would have read about it you know, a long time ago. <laughs> I think I asked you this once before, the first year I interviewed you. If you were commissioner of baseball, what's one or two things that you would like to see changed in the game today? Raise the mound. It's that simple. It's, all, it's the only thing you have to do is raise the mound. It'll put uh, an awful lot of things back in the ball game. If I had a second one that I could do, I would get rid of the DH. Or I would add the DH in the other league. Is there but, a preference? Uh, uh, no DH. Okay. I mean, it's, you know, Abner would, ha would be turning over in his grave if, if he knows that uh, we've got a designated hitter. Yep. In baseball, I mean, uh, and I'm talking about Abner Doubleday, who started the game of baseball in 18, how good am I? 1843, I think. Uh, and the only reason I know that is I looked it up this afternoon. 
But um, yeah, he uh, he started the game in 1843, and it's been kind of a great success ever since then. Yep. But uh, yeah, there's so many things that go into it. But the thing I'd like to have is, is a higher amount. I think it prevents uh, injury. Yep. Lots of and if you if when you learn how to pitch off of it, and there's a big difference. When you learn how to pitch off of it, you just become a better pitcher. There is that big of a difference from when they lowered it after the 68 season? Monster difference. Really? Absolute monster difference, right. Unbelievable. Yeah. And on the arm and shoulder and everything from that perspective? or Yeah, well, you got to learn how to pitch with it to take the pressure off. Okay. The mound was high for one reason, to take some of the, And our guys back in the 30s, 20s, whatever it was, we weren't smart. No one was smart enough to recognize what that high mound meant you know, is protecting yourself indirectly. So, uh, well, nobody knew about it. It saved a lot of arms. It yep. really did. Yep. Because now you got all your leverage in your legs, sure. in your waist area, and you, you can therefore take advantage of all that leverage. I mean, as high as I had my leg, all that did was give me more leverage, more leverage, and more leverage. Yep. And because uh, without the leverage, you'll only throw that fastball for an inning or so, and then your chopped liver after that. But uh, as long as you've got that leverage down, you're going to do pretty well. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. What would you say is your greatest memory of playing, Denny? Mm. Well, I think the night we won the World Series. Yep. That's all. I mean, it's uh, a lot of great things happened to me in, in, in the state of Michigan. You know, I had uh, three of my four children were born here. Okay. Uh, let's see, my grandchildren were, um, I think most of them were born here. Uh, all seven, I think, and six of those are girls. Boy, what a pain in the butt they are! <laughs> and uh, but you know what? You, you uh, I, I think that's my highlight of my life are my grandkids and my children. I mean, no question about it. And of course, I, I got very, very lucky and married the greatest woman in the world, as far as I'm concerned. And um, and and the game has been, as they say, very, the game has been very good to me. It has. The game has given me. Good, bad, and indifferent. Uh, it's been great to, to me and, right. and my family. And uh, regardless of what people think, and there's one thing we now know about the internet and what have you, and, and I want everybody to realize this. Uh, again, we're not complaining, we're just letting, I think most people know now, the internet is one big lie, just about everything. Yep. And uh, so when you start reading these crazy stories about he did this and she did this and he, uh, he jumped off this bridge and she flew to, Whatever, uh, ninety percent of it's just not true. Yep. And um, you try to you try to make a story out of some of that stuff, and people look at you and they say, well, "Oh, wow, well, you know." But but it is what it is. That's yep. all. And and if you're going to dwell upon it, every once in a while, just every once in a while, I will jump online when somebody is so outrageous. Uh, and and what I'll and I don't read any of it. But I find out about it from Sharon. I, I'll walk into the living room or the den and, and she's crying. And I'll say, what's the matter? What's the matter? And she'll say, I'll read this. This is just terrible. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I, I'll jump online once in a while and say something to whoever it is. Yep. And it's amazing. They go away. You never see them again. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's, and I always invite everybody. Listen, you want to talk? Where do you want me to meet you? Yep. I don't know what they think. We're going to come down here and shoot them? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, Denny, as always, it's a pleasure. It's, it is, isn't it, it? It's fun having you here. It's fun talking with you last night and today. And you still bring the line in out there for you as well as whoever you bring in, and we certainly you appreciate it. You know, i got to tell you, it's, it's amazing to me if everybody in Grand Rapids has not had my autograph at least five times. <laughs> uh, but you know what? That's called graciousness. That's yep. That's putting your heart in the right place. Yep. Uh, these folks come in, and some of these folks have come in now for 13 straight years. Sure. Uh, but we, we have a good time. Yep. Uh, we make sure everybody comes in and gets what they want. Uh, yeah, we've got published prices, but I don't know when we'd ever live with them uh, because it seems to me that we give a lot away than we, than we take in. Yep. And, uh, but it's a good time, and everybody's so nice and gracious and um, you know, it's just fun being here. It yeah. really is. Well, I know you always hear the bad side of professional athletes or ex-professional athletes. And, and I know Gary and I talk about it. We always look forward to this. We always look forward to meeting yeah. and talking with you guys again. And, and it's just real life and it means an awful lot. Yeah. We, we, again, we really enjoy it. It's, uh, 
one weekend a year, it's, uh, it's, it's so much fun. I mean, I can't even tell you how much fun we have when we come up here and pull Ty's leg and uh, <laughs> see the baby now, his granddaughter starting to grow up now and yep. running around like a bat out of hell. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's just amazing. And you know, I've been around these kids 13 years. Sure. It's it's just amazing how they've grown up. Yep. You know, and, and we've got uh, Ty's daughter who has been on this big diet now. She's lost 70 or 80 pounds. Yeah, exactly. She uh, looks great. So what what that means is, you know what? If we want to put our minds to it, we can do just about what we want to do. And, yep. And I, my hat's off to her because. Uh, it, she was getting very unhealthy, and uh, she's just a super lady, just a super, super lady. Pretty good hitter and, when she played and wow, pitcher. pretty good hitter. Man, <laughs> there's nobody playing Major League Baseball that can challenge her. <laughs> well, Denny, we'll let you get back to it. As My always, pleasure. sir, greatly thank you very appreciate much. it. And, folks, thank you very much for everything you've done for Lee High School, for me personally, our families. Uh, you've been wonderful, and uh, we'll see you next year, in year 14. Who knows who you're going to have in store for us at that point? You know who I'm trying to get next year? Who's that? I'll give you a secret. This is a secret now. Rudy. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you talked about that last night. Yeah, the... may bring in Rudy next year if we can work the scheduling out. But he's quite a young man, quite yep. a gentleman. And if you get a chance, see the movie. Uh, it was uh, produced and filmed at the University of Notre Dame. Uh, it's a story whereby he was the last guy on the team. And he played one play in his entire career for Notre Dame, the last play of his career. Yep. And both teams are falling down so he can score the only play he ever played and <laughs> scored a touchdown. It's, it's such a warm movie. Uh, everybody goes out of there with tears in their eyes. But yep. it was a great movie, and, and now I know why everybody pulled for him so hard. He is legitimately a good, great person. We will look forward to it, Please. sir. Please. Thank you very much, Denny. Thanks, Appreciate guys. it. God bless. Thank you. One more depending on a prayer. We are joined now by Mr. Donovan. How are you doing today, sir? Good. How are you, sir? I am doing well, thanks. Good. It's always good to be here for these events. Oh, yes, it is. They're keeping you busy out there today, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm learning a lot. Actually, Daryl is very insightful. I just kind of enjoy listening to him, yep. you know? Yep. And I think he's enjoying visiting with fans, answering questions, that sort of thing. It's been fun. Good. He certainly seems like the kind that enjoys visiting with anybody from what it looks like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's, no, he's a good guy. Yep. And he's, so, he's, he's very solid. He's a great guy. Wonderful interaction with the fans. Yep. It's a good event. Good. And your involvement here from that point of view, I know we asked this in years past, but every year it's got to be rewarding to see what this goes to and how the students and everything else benefit from these type of things. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, our students really do need, you know, the support. Sure. Um, you know, they need the income provided by this event. You know, um, you know, it's fun, you know, especially when you see students that are participating and they're getting to interact with athletes and professionals that yeah. were the best at what they did. Yes. Um, and, and, uh, you know, our students just really appreciate this event very right. much. It, it gives them something to look up to. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said to Denny when we talked with him, you're, all you hear, not all, but most of what you hear about athletes or ex-athletes is the bad stuff. Right. And to be able to see and meet some of these guys face-to-face, -face, and I, I mean, I know it's rewarding for myself. I can't be, imagine being a young man and looking at these guys, and maybe you weren't around when they played, but to know what they are and who they are, right. it's got to be something for them. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and every time you talk to somebody, you tell their story. Sure. And you learn more than what you learn in a stat line. Yep. You know, I learned so much about Daryl Evans that I just didn't know. Yep. You know, and that was just from sitting by him for two hours. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. How's the school year going? Good. 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 Busy. 
Yeah, things yep. are going well though overall? Very well. It's got to be tough these days to be an administrator of any sort in a school though. I would think so, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, from the point of view of what's going on and all you keep hearing are cutbacks and this and that and everything else, it's unreal. Right. But you, you do what you can control. Yep. You do it with what they give you and you try to provide everything that you can and put your students first. That's sure. the secret. Yep, absolutely. And, and it's neat to see students, and, and we've talked about this in the past here especially, students come back after five, ten years oh, yeah. and see the relationship that they have with some of you people. It's, it's oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's and it's got to be very rewarding from your point of view. Oh, yeah. Well, my oldest students now are like 32. Okay. And seeing them come back and being successful in their careers, meeting their children. Um, I'm to the point now where I've been doing this long enough where I'm starting to get a second generation. Okay. And that's really cool to see. I bet so. Yeah. It's I like bet. a family reunion. It's yep. not really like a parent-teacher conference anymore. <laughs> it really isn't. I bet. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, as always, we appreciate the time. It's well, always a you. pleasure to be here at Wyoming Lee. The event last night was fun. Oh, it was. I, I know they kept you busy on that one, too, with the raffle tickets oh, yeah. and everything. But well, uh, I, I know Ty always appreciates all of the assistance of everybody, and, oh. and it's always a pleasure to come back and talk with you guys. And it's a pleasure helping Ty. He's one of the hardest working individuals I've ever worked with. His heart is totally at Lee. Yep. He is a rebel for life, and oh, we appreciate okay. everything he does. Yep. All right. Well, thank you All very right. much. Always a pleasure. Always a pre pleasure. All the best to you. All right. Well, we are joined by 1984 World Series champion Daryl Evans. Daryl. Thanks for coming into town. My pleasure. Great to be back here again. Came all the way Michigan. from Texas? Yes, I live in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Okay. Now. What are you doing down there now, Darrell? Uh, basically, I'm not uh, kind of retired. Uh, I, you'd never retire, but uh, not formally. So I'm not really with a team or not coaching formally every day. I got to get or whatever, do all that kind of stuff. But yeah. I do have um, my son, my oldest son, and I have a baseball hitting or baseball academy in okay. Southern California. So I get out there once a month, uh, doing you know, going around still and getting to enjoy meeting people and yep. uh, you know, because they thought I was a pretty good baseball player. So I get to do all that kind of good stuff, <laughs> charity, and I have my own, uh, you know. I, I don't think there was stuff. any question about thought. You were a pretty good baseball player. Well, you you were. You know, you know what the great thing was? They kept giving me a uniform, so they must have thought I was pretty good. <laughs> but, you know, I was so lucky to come here after playing 15 years. Sure. And in the National League, but coming here, uh, playing in the American League, it was a big change, of course, and all that kind of stuff. Didn't know the pitchers, and I knew the players a little bit, but not much. Yep. And we didn't have interleague much back then. Right. So, um, but the ballparks, and I got to come to the best one. I mean, you know, people ask me, what's that all about? And I go, well, you know, I got to play every single day, well, half the season, in the oldest ballpark, the most renowned ballpark. Sure. Well, what about Yankee Stadium? I mean, no, 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 no. The, that D is as famous around the world as any place, yep. as anything. Oh, yeah, see, I, it's funny how reaction was, really, of course. So you, um, you don't hear that much. Well, that's it, everybody recognizes that D. I mean, remember when we grew up in, in school, the old English D, that meant something. And when you get to wear that thing, it means even more. So yep. I, uh, you know, and I got to play in Fenway and Yankee Stadium and Old Milwaukee County and Comiskey. I mean, it was like a baseball player's dream yep. to uh, be able to do that and then we had a pretty good team sure uh, but you know I played with these great great players that were hungry and in front of the best fans in the world yep and it started both your parents were professional players if I'm not mistaken from what I've been reading on you well actually my mom played professional softball for almost 10 years Two of her sisters did. Uh, two of my cousins, or you know, of course I wasn't young. I mean, I wasn't. I didn't really get to say and play much. Yep. So, but they played professionally before professional softball, like now. Yep. 
and they used to tour uh, growing up in Pasadena, California, right by the Rose Bowl. Um, they used to tour California, Arizona, Mexico, and I remember seeing some of the old pictures and stuff, and I used to kid my mom and stuff because they wore these satin uniforms with short shorts and all. Yep. And, and I'd be laughing and she got, I go, I oh, you pretty hot there, mom. And she, and I go, and she goes, yeah, except for the strawberries that we had on her. Oh, I bet. You know what I, so I had my mom's side and he, her, two of her brothers, two of my uncles played pro ball. And my grandfather, who I never got to see play, or my mom's father, pitched for 25, 30 years on a barnstorming kind of deal, but he played against like Babe Ruth's teams and him and Lou Gehrig and all that stuff because um, being Latin, he said, well, I don't know what PC is now, but uh, Mexican descent, mm -hmm. Salazar was their last name. So they didn't get a opportunity back then, but uh, they all told me and people in, major, in baseball, Fred Haney, one of the old time managers, said he had the best curveball he'd ever seen. Hmm. So that was that my mom's side. My dad never played pro baseball, but my dad played uh, really was a really good basketball player. His brother played pro baseball. Okay. And so, and of course, if you didn't play pro baseball, so what? You played anyway. All the reunions, everything else, what do you think we did? <laughs> there so was a you were taught flying. how to play baseball. I mean, you were expected to play baseball. Your fir my first birthday presents were catcher's <laughs> office. And, and it was beautiful. And uh, we happened to have in front of our, our house, we had the street lights. So all the kids in the neighbor would come over and play. They didn't want to, and they wanted to play. We all play in the front yard and, and not in the street and everything. But they really were hoping that my mom would come out to celebrity or that my mom kind of was <laughs> to come and play. So. Um, I guess I was supposed to be a baseball player. There you go. And it was such a beautiful thing to be able to go to the World Series. And we happened in San Diego. If it would have been Chicago, we couldn't have got any tickets. Yep. You know, Wrigley Field wouldn't have been. But we're in San Diego, hold 70, 80,000 people. I got to throw, bring 93 people to oh a World goodness. Series game <laughs> that I was involved in. So nothing better. Absolutely. And, and they always go, heck yeah, we don't care if he's the president of the United States, we'd much rather him, him being in the major leagues so yep. we could go to the games all the time. Yep. You were drafted five times before what you actually entered in. <clears throat> yeah, the first, um, I was in the first draft, 1965. Funny thing how that happened, why do you need a draft? I mean, you're restricting somebody and actually what it is is so we don't have to pay as much. Yep. Because obviously the competition made people get paid more well, I was in the first draft, and that was great. Uh, I got drafted seventh, eighth round, whatever, uh, by the Cubs. And we didn't have agents or anything like that. And um, so my dad kind of was, you know, the scout would come in and talk and, and go, oh, we're going to give you this and give you that and this lake. And then so they offered me $8,000. Okay. Signing bonus. And so my dad, you know, the guy left and my dad goes, well, you know what? The Cubs. So who's the third baseman for the Cubs right now? It's the third baseman, left hand, third baseman. My idol was Eddie Matthews. Uh, you know, like everybody had 400 in high school, whatever. <laughs> you know, you got to have 400. Anyway, so, uh, and one of the best players, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, got drafted pretty high. And so he goes, well, let's see. And he even asked the scout every time he'd ask the different scouts. So how long do you expect it to be for him to get to the major leagues? And they'd all go, well, you know, if he does really good, it'd be two or three years. So when the Cubs guy left, my dad said, uh, you know who the third baseman for the Cubs is right now? Ron Sano. Mm -hmm. How much long is he going to play? Pretty long. That's going to wait a while. So he went, okay, well, let's think about this. So I, I wouldn't have thought about sure. that. I wanted to play. Yep. But all of a sudden, so everyone, so the next time, so the, back then, if you didn't sign, which we ended up not signing, um, then you went into a supplemental draft. It was only for the people that, that had gotten drafted and didn't sign. Okay. So they could keep you again yep. without putting you back out there to be a free agent, so to speak. 
So I went through that. The Yankees, we went through the same thing. Yep. Amazing how they all, all five teams, offered me the same amount of money. Really? Yeah. See, people look at that and go, no, that couldn't happen. Yeah, they did. So the Yankees now come along. Who was the third base from the Yankees? Cleet Boyer. Okay. Then, the, then it was the Phillies. No, then it was the Tigers. Yep. I got drafted by the Tigers. And it was like a really a Rodriguez was, but they didn't really have, but whatever, young guys. Right. So, and then the Phillies, Dick Allen. Okay. And then, so now I had played two years of junior college, led California in hitting, which meant probably led the nation in hitting. Yep. And it's amazing how they all offered me the same amount of money, wasn't it? <laughs> Anyway, so we waited, 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 and then after the two years uh, after junior college, then I would have had to, I had to sign or go to USC, which I was going to go to in the first place, but I didn't go to USC. Meanwhile, they were winning eight or nine titles in a row when they had Dave Kingman and Tom Seaver and Tom uh, Jim Barr and all those guys mm-hmm. back then. Um, I could have been there the third baseman, but I didn't want to go there because I would have had to wait to my junior year to sign, which okay. they ended up I did anyway. But um, so going through that, then the A's, the Kansas City A's drafted me and people. So it was like I either had to sign or go to school at USC and wait. Yep. So so we finally signed. And actually, the best part about it was what we got a concession out of them. <laughs> To go, well, you know what? Charlie Finley called because he only had two scouts. So <laughs> cheap as he was anyway. But, and so he called and said, hey, listen, how about, you know what? On the way to the Rookie League in Brayton, Florida, let's, you get to go to Kansas City for the weekend to the big, in, the, in Kansas City, work out with a major club. Okay. Oh, my God. That was, that Island, was, right there. they would have said that before I would have signed a long time ago. <laughs> I get there. I mean, what a big thrill. I get to put the uniform on there. Well, when I got there, I got off the plane. Only the second time I'd ever been on a plane. Get off the plane, Kansas City. And, you know, this is your all-time thrill. Sure. Uh, and the guy, kept, the intern or whoever was, met me to take me to the ballpark or take me to the hotel for the weekend. Uh, he goes, hey, uh, we got to wait for another guy. Well, Reggie Jackson had gotten called up from Double A to the major leagues that day. Okay. And he was the guy we waited for to meet. So Reggie and I have been friends a long time. I met him when he was, uh, like I would yell at him, yeah, when you were humble, more humble, Reggie. But (laughs) no, but I mean, you know, it turned into be one of the greatest players of all time. And I love Reggie because I told him when I I got to American League and I hadn't played against him much. And of course, but we were friends for a long time. I told him, you know, I've never seen him not hustle. And that's how we judge people. Sure. And uh, so all the controversy, you know, you know he's, he's good at that, obviously. But, man, <laughs> who's ever had a better word to Mr. October? When you get oh, absolutely. Him. But anyway, so the coincidence of meeting him there and then the three days at Kansas City, and I did pretty good in batting practice. So the, I, it was great because I had my name out there now. Yep. Not just from the scouts but from the major league team where they saw me do pretty good. Anyway, so went to rookie league, uh, hit 489. <laughs> wow. Uh, went to A ball, went to Leesburg for a couple of Florida State League and Peninsula got moved up. The next year I went into the Marine. The one of the best things that ever happened to me is I went in the Marines. Uh, after the first year, I played four months or two months in the minor leagues. Went in the Marines, Marine Reserves, but it went in the Marines, went through all the training. And the beautiful thing about taking your button open and being a U.S. Marine, there was nothing better. It was the best team I was ever on because I had to do things that I never even imagined you have to do. And you find out how good and what you're really capable of doing. Plus, I went from about 190 to about 215 <laughs> because... You eat a lot, but man, they wear you out. So, so it was some of the things in your life that really happened great. Then I went to Double A, but they made me. They want me to play the first day of June. After I got out, I had done nothing. I lied to them. 
Oh, yeah, I play. I'm in shape. <laughs> wow. First day, so I'm rooming with Raleigh Fingers. <laughs> that was my roommate. I mean, you know, the guy, the handlebar, and, you know, he's good. I mean, obviously. But I'm playing with all those great guys that played uh, on the three world championships. Sure. Row. You know, Gene Tennis and Vida. Sal Bando. Yeah, Sal Bando. Well, Sal was a year ahead of me. He was in AAA and I was in AA. And so I got the biggest break of my life after, well, they said, can you play? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can play. Well, the second day I couldn't lift my arm. I hadn't been playing. Sure. And I hurt my arm, and luckily it wasn't a permanent thing, but I just, they had to move from third to first because they couldn't even throw across the field. I did okay. I, I, hit, I hit 270, and I thought, man, I'm, there, I, I'm terrible. I mean, I did 400 everywhere. I mean, that's kind of the reality you have to go through sometimes. Yep. You know, in high school, you're in 400, 500, and all of a sudden you're going, oh, man, 270, I suck. But it's because of the competition level, and then you learn how, okay, that, it's not that bad. So I, I did that, and when the season finished, I was disappointed in my year, and obviously I was worried about my arm. But J Eddie Robinson, the old player, played 15, 18 years in the big leagues, all-star and everything. He was the minor league director for the A's and became the assistant general manager for the Braves. Okay. And he, he took me in the Rule 5 draft, which means that I was on the AAA roster for the A's, and the Braves paid $50,000 to get me. But if you go through this rule, it's called a rule five, you have to play at the next level of what you were on. So because they bought me, I had to play in the major leagues. Yep. I wasn't ready to play in the major leagues. Yep. And, but they had to, or else they had to send you back, they lose you. So they love me, I got to go, the, how about this? My idol played for the 68 Tigers, Eddie Matthews. Just retired. My all-time idol, left-handed at third baseman, the guy that I loved. I saw him in the Sports Illustrated, this great swing, and he was a tough guy. Everybody loved him, and I was like, man, I'd love to meet him one time. Well, he retired from the 68 Tigers in 1969 when I went to the Braves. He was the hitting coach. My idol. And when I walked in the clubhouse, and I got other stories, but just make it quick, he came up to me and went, you with me, kid? <laughs> He was like my dad. Um, he was all the way. Hit balls off my chest till they hurt and yelled at me and went, does it hurt that bad? No, nah, it's okay, okay, well, come on. And he, he worked with my hitting, everything. He wanted me to get all his advice. Yep. And that's what we do when we get to be veteran players. We're trying to pass along what we learn. And man, so. I walk in that clubhouse, Orlando Cepeda Hall of Famer, Hank Aaron Hall of Famer, yeah. Phil Necro Hall of Famer, Lou Burdett was the hitting, pitching coach, and oh, Hoyt Wilhelm, the old uh, knuckleball reliever was still playing, okay. he was in that clubhouse, and, and that was the team that won in 1969, won the National League West, lost to the Miracle Mets, so they don't really remember him. That's the kind of team I went into and uh, Cleet Boyer was a third baseman. Bob asked for money and they helped me and they knew that I had to be on the team so I pitch hit, played once in a while, then they finally sent me down, came back up later and uh, got my chance. There you go. But I had the best teachers. Yep, you that's know, the, Those guys and, and what they really taught me was that, remember, you know, they give you a bad time, you know, you're a rookie, they gotta find out if you can take it because you're only as good as your worst player. And if you're going to be on their team, they expect you to be as good as you can be. So they teach you how to do that. They, they teach you how to deal with the losses and the disappointments and judging yourself by, oh, you only hit 270 instead of 400. All those things. And then the reality sets in. You're playing against the best players in the world, the best ones ever. Yep. I got to be on, I was on base when I ain't get 715. Exactly. How's that happen? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible stuff. Just, uh, well, you know, I, I, I appreciate it and I love it. And it's, it was just, uh, it's, it's a dream that it's, I get more time to dream it now. Yep. Yeah. Part of the uh, 
trio that had 40 plus home runs down in Atlanta as well between yourself and Henry Aaron and uh, Davey Johnson, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it? Exactly. And um, that was Eddie was responsible for that. Eddie had been the hitting coach for two years and then he became the manager. And we got traded for Davey. Yep. And Davey had, you know, Davey had hit 15, you know, 15, 20, 10, 12, 15. And for second base back then, there was a lot. Yep. But he was overshadowed because of Baltimore because they had Boop Powell and the Robinsons. And sure. So it was like, you know, they didn't know anything about it. But when he got over to with the Braves, and Eddie told him the same thing as me, hey, hit the ball over the fence. He goes, you're capable of doing this. Learn how to do it. And that's kind of the way it is. It's like, you know, you got somebody that believes in you that goes, hey, you're better than you think you are. Yep. And that's pretty much how we did it. We kind of took off. And, of course, when you got other guys on the same team doing really good, there was competition. You know, you're like, going, oh, come on, man, I hit one tonight. Come on, you got to hit one. <laughs> and, of course, that wins games and becomes camaraderie. And, um, and I think for Hank at the time, what he was going through, that people still have no how bad some of the people treated him. Oh, I bet. Um, Back then. But you know what? He's the guy I always tell people. He's the guy that I know of no other person, not alone baseball player, that have, could have gone through what he did and look what he achieved. I mean, obviously, how many people can hit home runs and not and only ones hit more than him. But, but I'm just saying he's the kind of person. He was chosen. Yep. And um, he's done it with complete class and dignity. And still hasn't got his due. All right. You know, I talked to him, and once and once I talked to him, and I go, yeah, well, just because you got more home runs and more RBIs and more run scores than anybody, does that mean you're the best player? Well, of course it does. But I kid him, and I go, nah, Babe Ruth is better. <laughs> because, well, yeah, because he won 100 games pitching, too. So you got to kind of give him credit for that. But remember, Hank broke Babe Ruth's record, which still... I think, in America, is the greatest record in sports. Right. Was then, for sure. Yes. I mean, it was way above any other record. And I got to play, I mean, I got to be a teammate and a friend of the guy that broke his record. <laughs> and I just, you know, he makes me smile every time I think of him. Because we called him Superman. I mean, his nickname was Soup. And I was like, cause yeah, he, I mean, he was like a cape whenever you needed him to hit a home run or do something. And people forget too, he won two batting titles and two stolen base titles. <laughs> I mean, he had, you know, he had lifetime 320 or whatever. I mean, and won all kinds of gold gloves and everything. Yep. And when you saw him play, it was almost like, well, he never made a mistake. And that's what you gotta look back on it, you know? And then you go, plus he averaged, you know, 38 home runs for 25 years? I mean, that's impossible. You can't even believe anything. <laughs> and then you see him play, and he wants to pass everything along. He was, oh, he was always like, oh, man, look at what the pitcher's doing. Yeah, I got him. I picked him up. Really? And, you know, at first you're like, oh, Hank? Okay, okay, what are we supposed to do? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, see, look, he's doing that. And you're going, because uh, it's Hank, you go, oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, but you don't. But he was teaching us to... Hey, keep watching. Yep. Because if you get some kind of an edge, it's no matter what, it's going to be good. Yep. So he was passing us the way it was supposed to be, and and I've been blessed to play a long time and get to do that now. That's why you asked me what I was doing. Kind of a long answer, but I'm teaching. Yep. And I love it. Yep. And um, it's uh, the major league guys need it. We all know that. But the guys that aren't there yet need them more. Absolutely. So, so I enjoy yep. being around them. Plus, they tend to listen to you a little bit more. Yep. You went from there out to San Francisco. And that you, you played with some pretty good players out there, too. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we look at it and they go, uh, I, think there's, I think there's more players that play for the Giants that are in the Hall of Fame than any other organization. Wow which seems impossible, but it was, because just before, well, in the early 70s, remember, it was Marishaw and Perry, Cepeda, Mays, McCovey, <laughs> for a start. I was going to say, right there's a good And only one, one time. 
So in baseball, that's the problem. People ask, well, how come, ah, oh, man, you had great teams, how come you didn't win more? Well, it's like, well, the other team's trying to win too. Yep. And look at who we were playing against. I mean, in the 70s and 80s, I faced 39 Hall of Fame pitchers. Yeah, you said that so last far. night. That's amazing. I mean, and, and you look back, and of course, at the time, but some of them are older. And, you know, it's like an honor. And it's like you find out how good you are. You find out whether you can handle it or not. Yeah. There, so you have two choices. Well, let's see. I can't <laughs> hit Nolan Ryan, so I guess, what, am I going to quit? <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's a game that levitates the best people to where they're supposed to be, and they bring the other people with them that don't think they're supposed to be that good. So you just, and so when I was with the Giants, being around all those, again, my gosh, I got to bat third in front of Hank Aaron and Willie McCovey. <laughs> no one else can say that. And I led the league and walk three times. Yep. So I feel pretty good about it. And yet, you know, they're your friends. They're the people that count on you. You know, they wanted me to get on base. You know, they wanted me to do good. So we were, you know, we were brothers and friends. And, you know, it's, it's like part of your family rather than not your family that you're born into. Sure. It's your family that goes, lives together for eight months. And, um... It's real. It's it's such a it's such a fun thing to think back. And you know, Mac just passed yep. a few days ago, and I know I've told this story, but uh, I was just out there. They had the Willie Mac Willie Mac Award for the Giants every year. They have that for like the MVP, most inspirational guy, whatever the the team votes the guy. Sure. And so every guy that's won it, they invite back every year. Well, I I won it, so I go back almost all the time, see your buddies and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And um, and Mac was there. Uh -huh. And, you know, you're like, I mean, who has a cove named after him? <laughs> I mean, he has, he has a statue out there in the middle of the bay. And everybody in the world knows McCovey Cove. And I, you know, knowing him before and going out there and sitting up there and he used to go to he went to every game yeah he after finished playing every single game he loved it so much hmm. but the new park was made and we were out there i don't know it was 10 12 years ago we we're sitting up and watching batting practice one day well you know going out there for the ward and i was out there sitting up there on his and watching guys hit and stuff and then he goes to me and he used to call me he called me Howdy Doody because my nickname in Atlanta was Howdy Doody because when they ask you for the media book about what your favorite program was, for some reason that slipped out. <laughs> and then, of course, the ball players love that. So anyway, so but, you know, it's a, it's a sign of people like you. Sure. And it was fun. Well, every time I saw Mac was you and me, Doody. But because we were hitting third and fourth, and we were friend, we locked it almost next, to, you know, right next to each other, yep. and we had this great friendship, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But um, so when I saw him out there this last time, walked into the room, and he's he's been in a wheelchair for a long time. He's had a lot of his knees got infected and all that kind of stuff. Couldn't walk for a long time. Just had this beautiful, he always has this beautiful smile, these gleaming eyes. He's kind of got that little thing below him. You're going, wonder what he's really thinking here, you know, but <laughs> kind of a little mischievous guy too, kind of. So anyway, so we're, like I said, so we're back out to, and going back 10 years, 12 years, whatever, up there watching BP and he goes, hey, duty. He goes, are you taking batting practice here? And I go, well, no, Mac, I'm, we're not playing anymore. And then he kind of paused, and you could see him look out there and kind of go, what would we have done in this ballpark? Yeah. So wistfully, like, and now he's getting to do it. That's, I know that's exactly what he's doing right now. You know, he's up there getting to hit balls <laughs> in your own cove. <laughs> it's great. And, you know, he may, it just meant so much to so many people. 
he was Mr. San Francisco Giant. You know, Willie Mays was there, and then Willie was kind of Mays was gone, and Mac took it over. Yep. And um, he meant so, he means so many, so much to so many people in the Bay Area. He's the identity, this big giant man, the you know gentle giant that just everybody loved. Yep. And um, he was so great to my kids and the family, and so. But you know what? I've always smile when I his name gets sprang up because, man, I can't wait to get up there and hit some out with him too. <laughs> had to be quite the honor when he retired. You were named captain of the Giants right after him. That had to be quite the honor at the time. Well, you know, it was really cool because, um, you know, I played against him in the 70s with the Braves. And, of course, you know, you go down there, he's the first baseman, and you get to talk to him and... I uh, you know, like I said, he was great. Willie Starr, all those those guys, those guys were just, you know, they were such bigger than life people, and and your idols kind of, even though you're almost their age, but you know, you really respect them so sure. much. And then you watched how they played, and then you heard how the other teams respected and all the other players and everybody else. Um, yeah, and going there, well, he wasn't there. He was with the Padres when I got traded in '76. So I get out there and. Um, Bob Lurie had taken over, and one of the things he kind of was, we got to get Mac back. But, you know, everybody's like, oh, well, he's 35, he's old, he can't play anymore. You know, that, wow, we all went through that stuff. Well, you can't play at 35, but we can still play. <laughs> so we got him back. And what a, I mean, it was such a boost for everybody. You know, it was like having your dad come home. Uh, not just for the players, but the city. And we've also traded for Vita Blue at the same time mm -hmm. from the A's. All of a sudden, we became, they gave us a reason. They go, yeah, we're as good as anybody now. Yep. And the fans went crazy. The city came back into play. Um, you know, that's what the guy meant to us. Yep. And, uh, of course, I mean, we, you didn't have to name him captain. He was the captain. And... Um, and, you know, after he, and then, you know, when he retired, uh, they asked me to do that. And I was like, um, you know, you're, you, I don't know if anybody feels comfortable sure. in that because Following what does that mean? Steps, well, so. but what does that mean? And kind of, you know, Eddie did the same thing to me and said, hey, you need to say stuff, not just you, but you need to say stuff because people listen to you because of the way you go about things. And that's well he was I mean that's basically it it's not something you put that C on there and all of a sudden you go yell at everybody no you're the one that maybe doesn't need to yell you're the one that needs to hey come over here don't ever let that happen again yep so I mean that gives you responsibility it makes it kind of like you got to remember man I can't let down but I didn't anyway but it was it was such a nice feeling to Yep. Follow and oh, something like so. that, and um, you know nobody's. I mean, you brought that up, but I didn't really think about that till now. And um, what that meant, like I said, so when I went back and we all got to see him this last time a month ago, first thing I was you and me, duty. Yep. I was like man, <laughs> you know, just like we were back That's playing. Great. Yeah. I remember when he came to the Tigers, it was kind of a surprise to everybody because the Tigers had not entered into the free agent pick up at that point they hadn't put the big money out they were more coming from within and I mean everybody I, I remember the excitement of everybody and around it when when there was announced that you were coming in and what was the key to that well you know what I didn't know what you guys kind of knew because I wasn't in America League and I didn't I'd never been to Detroit you know I'd never played here yep um, I did know the Michigan people and the great sports, and because, like I said, I grew up at, at the Rose Bowl, so I used to see all the people come out, and I used to go down there and talk to them and see what fantastic fans they were, and of course in the old ballparks and the tradition. So I knew about that stuff, but um, going into it was, uh, as a free agent, I didn't want to leave San Francisco. But they never offered me a contract. Uh -huh. They, I mean, they pretended, and we talked, and 
they pretty much said, now you're too old and you're going to cost us too much money. I was like, well, we haven't even made an offer yet. Yep. So that at the time they were putting in the paper, oh, yeah, he wants a million dollars a year for five years. And I'm like, no, I'm 36. 30. Who would? Nobody would ask for that anyway. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's not fun to yep. have to put up with that because... And then, the, you know, it's like, well, how come you didn't come back? And it's like, well, there, this wasn't, nothing happened. So as I became a free agent, I didn't want to. Like I said, we negotiated with them right down to the end. And, or we didn't know negotiate. They just told us, nah, we'll think about it. Okay, be a software. Well, we're only going to give you one year. It's like, well, I'm a free agent. I mean, I, mean, I just hit 30 home runs again. Yep. You know, so what do you want me to do? So... No, I'm going to at least, so we got to the point we're at least going to go out there and see who's interested. Funny, the first day of free agency. Now, remember, again, so I get stuck into the first free agent draft. Now, is that an oxymoron <laughs> or what? They're still getting away with that. Yeah. I mean, what's the point? Because, see, people forget that you can't be a free agent until you've played six full years in the major leagues. So people think that if everybody's a free agent every year, no, right. you have to play six years, and then you can be a free agent, and then you can't be a free agent again for another five years. So you have to play 11 years to be twice free agent. <laughs> but it seems to people, I guess, that, oh, but, you know, the free agent are going everywhere and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's not the case at all. Anyway, so when I got my chance, now we have a draft. So we had... And it was like, oh, he's too old. Nobody's going to draft him. And so I got drafted by 17 teams. Wow. Only heard from three of them. The other 14 drafted me. And in their own press was like, oh, he's asking for too much money and too many years. Never talked to me. Wow. But they had to satisfy their fans. Sure. As to why they didn't. Like, oh, why wouldn't you get this guy? Yep. Anyway, so, but my hometown team. The Dodgers, the day, five minutes after the thing, after the draft, we weren't supposed to talk to anybody, and actually we weren't. Jerry Kepstad was my agent. I wasn't talking to him. I didn't want to know anything until something was going on because all it would do is get me in trouble. If the press called, I'd just go, hey, Jerry's taking care of things. And, yep. You know, well, was this team watching this? You know, all that kind of stuff. So all of a sudden my hometown team, the Dodgers, but I hated the Dodgers. <laughs> I grew up I, before they came out there. I was a, I was a Braves fan, Milwaukee Braves. I loved Eddie Matthews and Hank Aaron. Look at I got to play with. Them. Sure. And in the National and American League, the Yankees were winning a lot then. So everybody hated the Yankees like yep. they do now. Who was the second best team back then? The Tigers. Tigers. Tigers were my my favorite team in the American League. I ended up playing for both of them. It was awesome. Anyway, all these kind of things happened. Amazing. So, and, so I was a, we had AAA, Pacific Coast League. My parents had season tickets and all their friends, and of course, we didn't like, like I said, we kind of like baseball. We go to the games all the time. Well, we didn't, of course, when the Dodgers came out, just like, oh, okay, this is baseball, bad, of course, and all that, but I didn't, you know, like I said, I had my other teams. So now I go to the Braves, to the big leagues, we were in the National League West, rivals of the Dodgers. Sure. So I hated them even more. <laughs> you know, because they were a team we had to be. Yep. And then when I got to the Giants and become of the giant Dodger rivalry, of course, <laughs> man, I hated even more. So, because we used to kid about it all the time, because in the minor leagues, the Dodgers used to have new uniforms every year. And we used to have the hand-me-downs. They had, they even had their pants ironed. We're like, <laughs> we hate you. We're going to kill you. We're going to beat you anytime we can. So when the big leagues, for 15 years, I was a rival. The sure. Dodger, you know, so, and, but all my family was Dodger fans because they were down, right? right? And they always claim, and they still do, oh, yeah, but no, we changed the leases. No, you didn't. You did because I gave you tickets. And you pretended like you, and I gave you a giant hat and jacket, but now you're back to being Dodger fans again. <laughs> so anyway, we, we, we always have fun with that. But anyway, so the Dodgers right away 
gave me a two-year deal, guaranteed deal. I'm like, man, playing your hometown. That's where I was living out in Southern California. Uh, because Steve Garvey was the first baseman. Yep. But Jerry Kepstein, my agent, was Steve Garvey's agent. <laughs> well, Steve Garvey wasn't going to go back to the Dodgers because they didn't want him or whatever. They, you know, they weren't going to pay him. Right. You know, it's a big part of it. They sure. don't want to pay you. They want the best people, but they don't want to pay you what you want necessarily. So their excuse is, ah, he's too old. He wasn't that good. It's amazing. What kind of what kind of business rips their own product? Yep. But anyway, so I could have gone back there right away. They called five minutes late after the thing, and um, and the Yankees did, and the Yankees called. Yep. Two year deal. Well, because Garvey was leaving, I would have played for the Dodgers. Okay. Played first base. No DH, right? But the Yankees, they had Mattingly at first and Pagley Ruler at third, and George Steinbrenner wanted me to be a DH. Okay. Well, I went, no, no, I'm already old. You guys think I'm old. As soon as I become a DH, I'm on a way out. No, no, I played 160 games this year at third. First, I played every time. It's part of you being good by playing. Yep. Being a DH is a hard thing to do. Pinch hitting four times a game, that's not fun. You're not really into it. Well, I wasn't into the game. Sure. So I didn't want that to happen. And then the Tigers, all of out of the blue. AD, Jerry, AD, the Tigers called. Now remember, we didn't have cell phones or anything. So I had to be up in a phone booth somewhere. Oh, yeah. I was like making, okay, I'm going to call you back at 7 o'clock, be in the phone booth again. <laughs> because Jerry was so paranoid that somebody was listening on the phone, which is, you know, I laugh and we laugh now, right? But, uh, hey, maybe it was. Yep. So we didn't have cell phones. Yep. So it was like it was like being a spy going around and all that. So every time I was like, oh, man, I, gotta, oh, I can't wait for her to hear what he had to say. Tigers, three-year deal. There you go. Okay, the money was okay, close. Yep. Um, that was more money I ever made. I mean, it was more, you know, it wasn't even half of what the Giants were supposed to give me, but it was okay yep. because it was a three-year deal so that I knew even if I did good, if I did good, that I, I could keep playing. Sure. So it was the, like, well, I'm going to get all the money I can the first year and that's all I care about. Well, I didn't care about the money. Yeah. Money's money. Money is a reward. And I had enough money at the time. And it was like, okay, I'm playing for this because, because I'm one of the best players. So that's how much they got to pay you. Because if they don't pay you, they're not going to pay anybody else. Yeah. So that's the way it works. Anyway, we go into, so they, three years. Wow, okay. So we go to the Dodgers and the Yankees. Hey, we got a three-year deal. Do and we even told the Dodgers because the Dodgers are going to pay me more money. One more year. Yep. And they'll sign for you tomorrow. Right now. They never came back. They never hmm. got off the three-year deal. So the Tigers became the team that was in play. Well, now we're now I didn't, like I said, I didn't know any much about them. Now I started seeing the team. Yep. Yeah, they lost by Baltimore two games a year before. Exactly. And look at all these guys. And I had just played in the 83 All-Star game and Tram and Lou and Lance and Jack and Petrie. It was like, wow. Yep. So all of a sudden, I was like, yeah, this is, okay, this might be a good thing. <laughs> and, then I, and then Jerry goes, hey, listen, okay, I got you. Yep. I got you. He goes, if somebody else comes up with something different, I'll get back to you too. He goes, but right now, okay, let's find out. He goes, Okay, let me talk to them and see if they'll up the ante a little yep. bit. They never came off it. Never changed. We're honest. Bill, uh, Bill of Joy. And I think Bill was really responsible for okay. wanting me. Yep. He was a newer guy yep. that came in and could see that I was the guy or one of the guys that could make them at least three games better. Sure. And um, – it was so much better than that. But anyway, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You know, we got this long yep. story. But it was so great. It's, you look back and you go, you know, things happen for a reason yep. at the right time. And look at how many people you affect and how much fun yep. it is to be 
and a sports city and a beautiful city that craved winning. Yes. And to be there, just be a part of that yep. and see even now, everybody cherishes that moment. And man, I got to be right in the middle of it. <laughs> well, we got to wrap it up because they're getting ready to do the auction. But I have to ask you one question. We asked Denny the same question, and I want to see if you give us the same answer as, you did, as Denny did. You didn't have interleague play back then, so you didn't get to face Denny. But he said you faced each other in spring training several times. Who got the better of the deal? Oh, I did. <laughs> you know why? I never. I, I don't even know if I got a hit off him because he walked me every time. So obviously he was scared of me. And I know that's what he said too on it. He said that he got the better of the deal, yes. See, he's older in his memory then. You know, it's funny because I don't know. I mean, spring training, you know, you go about it a little differently. Yes, absolutely. One of the things that was great about Denny was because when I was, you know, he's uh, well, six years, seven years older than me. I saw him pitch against the Angels um, in 68. Okay. No, I'm sorry, in 67 when I was still in junior college. Went down and watched the game. And back then they used to warm up in front of the dugout. Yep. So you could see the starting pitcher pitch. Sure. Well, you know, we're young and I'm playing on these great baseball teams. And it's like, you know, this guy, well, he won 24 that year or whatever it was. And you're going, oh, let's go down and see, you know, Danny. And no, I wasn't ever cocky. I don't mean it that way. Yep. So oh, let's go see, you know. Watch him warm up and go, man, I can hit that. He isn't that good. <laughs> oh, yeah, he only won 31 games. So <laughs> it's funny how that goes back, and then you, you become a teammate, and you see, just like everybody else, the intensity, you know, wanting to be a good teammate, yep. um, wanting to be as good as he was before, but because of injury, maybe he couldn't, but he was going to be as good as he could be. You know, he reminds me. Like a guy like Frank Tanana who sure. hurt his arm and then still won 200. Developed games. a curve big time after that. Well, whatever. He did whatever he needed. And yep. Denny was that kind of guy. And that's why you wanted him on your team. Yep, absolutely. And, and it was, you know, it was just a continuation of all of us, and that's the way it's supposed yep. to be. Well, Daryl, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure these last two nights getting to know you and uh, listen to you and talk with you. I, I greatly appreciate it. Well, and you. I know Ty and everybody appreciates you making the long trip in. And so that is going to wrap up our show this week and uh, this year. Excuse me. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure coming out to the 13th Annual Stubby Overmeyer Card Show. Special guest, Jay Reimersma, Denny McLean, and, of course, Daryl Evans. So until next time, Gary Vandevelde, thank you very much for the camera work and producing work. As always, you're top notch, my friend. Next time, God bless. All the best. Thanks, Daryl. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and dead?
don't eat that mayo. Don't pick you up. Mommy, I've been in my juice now. And bottles of ketchup and uh, mustard. Well, Denny, we'll let you get back to it. As My always, pleasure. sir, greatly thank you very appreciate much. it. And folks, thank you very much for everything you've done for Lee High School, for me personally, our families. Uh, you've been wonderful. And uh, we'll see you next year, year 14.